Good evening, Bahamas. You are tuned in to MB12 Broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, the murder count climbs two notches in less than 24 hours. The House Speaker unapologetic after COB students were barred from Parliament. Civic groups preparing to march to Rawson Square will tell you why. Plus, government to invest $1 million in a new facility for special needs students. We've got those stories and so much more. I'm Bonnie Toot and NB12 starts right now. Less than 24 hours after a 29-year-old man was murdered outside his home, a woman was killed and another man was shot in the Pinewood Gardens area here in the capital this afternoon. It's the country's 36th murder for the year. While McCartney has the details. Details about those who were shot are still scarce, but what we can tell you, according to police, is that a black car was coming along this bend here around Poinciana Avenue and Pinecrest Drive. It was being chased by a silver car, according to police. That black car then crashed into this wall over here. That's when the occupants of the silver Honda unloaded on those people in the black car. You can see just how many shots were fired by the circles denoting where the shell casings of the bullets fell. According to the officer in charge of the Southeast Police Station, Assistant Superintendent Kipling Roll, sometime around 2.40 this afternoon, a man came to the station and reported that while he, a woman, and another man were driving east on Pinecrest Avenue in Pinewood Gardens, they were accosted by four men in a silver Honda Accord who were traveling in the opposite direction. Reports from the Central Detective Unit are that the Honda stopped near the entrance of Southern Dreams Estates to prepare to turn in. But when the man who was driving the black car screwed down his window and saw a man in the silver car with a gun, he sped off trying to get away. Eyewitness reports are that the car then crashed into a wall opposite the entrance of Southern Dreams. Rapid gunfire then erupted. The driver of the silver Accord then made his getaway. According to Kipling, the driver of the black car was able to make it to the police station, which is just up the street. Upon inspection of the vehicle and passengers, police discovered that a female in the back seat was shot in the back, and the man who was driving was shot in the arm. The other man in the car was reportedly unharmed. Police quickly called EMS personnel, as you can see from this exclusive eyewitness cell phone video taken at the scene. All three people were taken to hospital. The unidentified woman died at the accident and emergency unit about 30 minutes after her arrival, according to police. At last report, the man who was shot was in critical condition. Police had no suspects in custody up to airtime. Again, this is the 36th murder so far for the year. Reporting for MB12, I'm Juan McCartney. Police are also investigating the murder of a Southern Heights resident. He was gunned down while washing his car Sunday evening. Celeste Nixon was on the scene yesterday and has those details in this report. Police say the life of a young man was taken yesterday afternoon after he was chased and shot multiple times while washing his car outside his Golden Gates residence. Relatives have identified the victim as Lovato Miller. Assistant Commissioner of Police Anthony Ferguson said around 5 p.m. on Sunday, the victim was cleaning his Honda car outside his home on Halifax Street when a man emerged from a black car that was parked opposite his residence and opened fire. The deceased was on the outside of his residence cleaning his vehicle when a male emerged from a dark color vehicle that was parked just opposite his residence. Uh, this male was armed with a handgun and began shooting at the deceased who ran to take cover. He was chased by this male and shot several times about the body uh, where he fell between the two, his resident and another resident where he succumbed to his injuries. Ferguson appealed to anyone with information concerning this latest homicide to come forward. As um, you can imagine, um, there are too many homicides that are taking place in, on this little 21 by 7 and all behemoths all Bahamians ought to be concerned anytime somebody is shot. 
and I make an appeal to each and every one of you. There are persons out there right now watching this report who is aware of what is happening and I urge you to come forward and make a report. Dozens of onlookers watched as a victim's body was taken away and police inspected the bullet-ridden car. Distraught relatives could also be seen and heard around and inside the house screaming. Somebody's life was taken away. It's unlawful and we need to find the person who's responsible. This incident marked the country's 35th murder for the year. Reporting for MB12, I'm Celeste Nixon. College of the Bahamas students were expecting an apology from Speaker of the House of Assembly, Dr. Kendall Major, during a meeting today. However, that didn't happen. COVID's leaders demanded an apology from Major after they were denied entry into the lower chamber on April 17th. Police claimed at the time they had intelligence that the student body was going to cause a disruption. Paige McCartney has the latest. But Major said this meeting in and of itself is a reflection of his sincerity in that what happened to the college students should not have. But he maintains that he's unapologetic and that Parliament's decision was not wrong. My role and responsibility is to, is to keep order and respect in those chambers called the House of Assembly. For that, I am unapologetic. Majors referring to his order to police two weeks ago that they should do their duty regarding information they say they received that COBUS members intended to make a scene in the House of Assembly. This is the first time the Speaker of the House is speaking publicly on the matter. I don't feel that the House was misrepresented and the House did anything wrong. And so for that, I think the incident although offensive and embarrassing, is very unfortunate. And, and I believe it ought not, to, ought not to have happened. But in the circumstances, from time to time, these things do happen. Major said he agreed to meet with the college students to explain to them why he refused their entry into the lower chamber and to allow them an opportunity to ask questions. However, he said he wanted to tread carefully and not make a public apology, although he admitted to apologizing to COBUS President Ernesto Williams on the phone already. My final question is, because I know you denoted to the apology that you gave me over the phone, are you retracting that as well? No, I'm not retracting anything. I'm saying that uh, I, I apologize of the unfortunate incident that had happened. I said that to you. I think that aspect is unfortunate that you have to go through this, that you have to feel hurt, unwanted, uh, 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 used, uh, standing in the sun. Major said if groups larger than five people want to sit in on House proceedings, they must give notice ahead of time because space is limited. COBUS executives maintain that they called beforehand. Fourteen of them showed up that day. Major said that was another reason the students were denied access. But the COBUS president said they are not satisfied with the speaker's reasoning. It's, it's still unacceptable. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your presence. Um, but it speaks poorly, and I, I am pretty sure I can speak for not only, well, I can't yeah. speak for anyone else, but I can speak for the College of Bahamas Union of Students, and I know many of the individuals and the general public will agree with me that this is a, this is a sad moment in our history. Colbus is concerned that it or any other student body may again be denied access to the House of Assembly, but Major assured that he will prevent that from happening again. I don't think, it's, I don't think it will happen again. I think this, this meeting is to tell you that you're welcome to come to the House of Assembly at any time. If, if, if you're coming to the House of Assembly beyond five persons, let me know, and it'll be a smooth transaction for you. I, I don't, I, this, this, this solves the problem. This solves the challenge. This is, my, this is me making amends. This is me trying to work with you. I respect you highly, each and every one of you. I want you to be a part of the process. I cannot take back what has happened. I can't take it back. However, going forward, we can do better. But the COBUS body says it's still awaiting an apology from the police force, in particular ACP Leon Bethel. For MB12, I'm Paige McCartney. As public discontent grows over the proposed gaming bill, at least two civic groups are preparing to march to Rawson Square on Wednesday to call for equal opportunity for Bahamians. 
However, organizers say it's not political and it goes way beyond the right to gamble. They're fighting for Bahamian to have been oppressed, marginalized and discriminated against for far too long. So I'm asking the government not to proceed with that bill. You will get a lot of um, um, flack for that if you do. Head of Citizens for Justice Bishop Walter Hanschel called the proposed gaming bill hypocritical and evil, asserting that it should not be passed in Parliament. The new gaming bill would allow people outside the Bahamas to gamble on a website established, maintained and operated by the holder of a gaming license. However, they must be in a country or jurisdiction that permits online gaming. One controversial aspect is it only prohibits Bahamian citizens from gambling. Bishop Hanschel says while he does not support gambling, he does not feel foreigners should be able to gamble in the Bahamas when Bahamians cannot. Call your MP and tell your MP that is an unjust bill. You cannot come into somebody's country or, or, or even in someone's house and have more rights than that person. That is what is happening in our country. And unless something is done, the Bahamian people will rise up. There will, there will be a revolution. Member of Citizens for Equal Opportunity and popular radio talk show host Daryl Miller says the new bill is perhaps the final straw for many frustrated Bahamians who feel marginalized. I feel as though the main bill that the government should be dealing with is the bill for equal opportunity. Any other bill is but a smokescreen to the real issue facing this country today. Citizens of this country are being marginalized and oppressed, discriminated against, and literally dying. That is the bill of all bills. However, he and Hanjo stress that their fight is much bigger than gambling. They say they're focused on all aspects of discrimination. The groups plan to distribute T-shirts and flags at Southern Recreational Grounds tomorrow. They will return to that site Wednesday for their march. On Wednesday, the first day of May, we will march proudly from all over this island to the bust of Samilo in Rawson Square in front of the Churchill Building. It is in that square that the power, the political power, meets and resides. And so that is where we will go. We will not go over any bridge other than the bridge of oppression, the bridge of discrimination. And so we will meet at Samilo's bust.